At the 2005 Sundance Film Festival, Hustle and Flow won the Audience Award for Dramatic Feature. According to the film's creator, the story about a pimp who wants to be a rapper is also a love letter to his hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. Here is the trailer for Hustle and Flow. Come on, get your mind right. It's gang time. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What's happening with your mind? You like what you see, huh? Why don't you walk over there and explain it? It's hard out here for a pimp, man, for real. Mm. Hold on, I like that, man. It's hard out here for a pimp. You ain't never gonna be nothing more than what you is right now. My daddy, you know, his heart gave out on him when he was my age. Got me feeling like this is it for me. It's like all my days, I've been hearing this, this beat in my head, man. Things don't always come together just because you want them to, all right, man? Just listen to it. If you ain't feeling it, my mouth's your life, okay? Woo! Hey, man. For sure. We bring him in, help him develop our sound. You know he white, right? No. He just light skin. That's a one in a million shot. This dog got him some tricks, man. Put your hands on the wheel. That means we in charge. We in charge. Before I put my mouth to this mic, this track here, this is my heart, man. This is my life, and it's a battle within. I gotta survive, even if I'm sitting in the wind. It ain't the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight, fight in the dog. So with this said, you tell me what it is you want to do with your life. Keep Joining me now is the writer, director of the film, Craig Brewer, and the film's producer, John Singleton. I am pleased to have them here to talk about this movie. Is producer your title? Producer. Okay. Uh, tell me how this got started and, and, and how you got hooked up with him and how hard a sell it was to get the produce, to get the Hollywood studio to come get involved. Well, um, I was making uh, movies uh, just out of my house in yeah. Memphis, Tennessee. I was uh, just shooting them on, uh, you know, on digital video cameras and, you know, editing them in my house, like on a computer. I would even build sets in my living room. So th there was times we'd have to like go next door and quiet down neighbors, tell them to turn off their air conditioning, and, you yeah. know. And so, I, you know, I really when I started you know seeing some of the rappers in town i started going over to their homes and i saw that they started they had these uh these makeshift studios yeah. you know they were they were making like music studios out of the, their kitchens you know they or out of their closets and and as much as there's some people that think that rap is just a bunch of noise i i saw something really really creative and how the whole music was put together and so with just kind of my uh, my experience of, uh, of of me making movies with my family and trying to make something um, mixed with this uh, this creation of rap, I began to see a, a story that was really a Memphis tradition. You know, right. Memphis has this tradition of uh, makeshift studios, uh, Sun Studios, where sure. Sam Phillips began. It was like a boarding house and Stax mm -hmm. Records, which is like a it's like a movie theater that they, uh, just an abandoned movie theater, that they put a curtain down the middle and made a recording studio. Yeah. But, but it's those limitations throughout Memphis's history that I think uh, ultimately make some of the most incredible music of our age. So I wrote the script in Hollywood. I tried to, tried to get some studios to make it, but it, it, it was like a four-year journey uh, with a lot of them saying no and not with you or not with the cast that you want. And Stephanie Elaine, who's the producer, um, uh, fin uh, wanted to finance it herself uh, right. for like half a million dollars, and so she sold her house, and she was gonna ask John Singleton, who you know she gave you know helped John get uh, Boys in the Hood going, right. uh, see if uh, John would maybe come in on half of it. And so that's when uh, Mr. Singleton came into my life. You saw it and said what? Uh, this, the idea. 
this guy deserves to be a filmmaker. I read, read the script and I called him up and I said that he, he'd done what they'd always told me at USC Film School. The cheapest way to make a film is to write a film. And right. reading the script of House on Flow, the story leapt off the page and it deserved to be a picture. So we, like, he, like Craig says, we went around to, to uh, all these different people that are friends of mine, studio executives, and um, I, I went along with uh, Craig and Stephanie. And I, I was so cavalier about it. I said, okay, I, I just made a movie and I made $230 million, you know, Too Fast, Too Furious. I'm going to tell them that this is a hip and, yeah, right. and, and cool movie and it's going to make a lot of money and Southern hip hop is the hottest thing around and they're just going to fall to their knees and then yeah, like, yeah, say, yeah. we want to make the movie. Anything you say, John. Yeah, anything you say, John. <laughs> and it didn't happen. And we were so what did they say? They said that they really loved the script, they loved the material, that um, they had hesitations on casting Ter Terrence Howard because he wasn't a known um, um, actor. He wasn't someone who would bring in an audience, they, they thought. Um, uh, one studio had issues with, with Craig being white. They said, you know, well, yeah, won't sell. it won't sell. He's a white guy doing this movie. And so um, we they were sitting... Hadn't thought about Eminem, had they? <laughs> yeah, I know. We thought, we just sat around and we was like, um, we were despondent. And, I, um, I, you know, I, I called him up for a night and I just said, you know, I'm going to green light it myself. I'm going to do it, you know. And, and then he went to a concert and um, was it Arkansas or, or yeah, Memphis? Yeah, actually it was in Memphis. In yeah. Memphis. Yeah. And he went to this concert and it was like Ludacris and, um, and David Banner and right. a number of hip, uh, Southern hip hop uh, crunk artists. And it, the whole audience was predominantly white. And he called me up and said, yeah, yeah. We're, we're right. Hollywood's we're right. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. Go ahead. And that was it. Now, when you said I'm going to green light it, what did that mean? That meant that well, I was green light means for a studio. But. That meant that I personally was going to make the financial commitment to 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 this film to to put up whatever it costs to make this picture, mm. and that's what I ended up doing. And so then, take me. What happened next? Well, you know, now we have to, you know, now I got to make this movie with yeah. John right. Singleton's right. money. You right. know? And right. so, as much as everybody's like, that's a dream come true. Uh, you know, it's it's a little bit scary too. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my I, one I, of my I, heroes. My biggest point of intimidation was I said, listen, if you don't do this right, my kids are gonna have to go to public school. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I remember I kept saying, yeah. oh God, I hope my kids yeah. don't have to go to public school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a good day shooting. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but so I mean, the, the pressure. Yeah, but the the comfort was is that Memphis has uh, been supporting me, trying to make my my movies for no money, and and this is a opportunity opportunity where you know I could really showcase the musical talent you know we had like a lot of the old school Stax artists do our score I mean yeah. they just live in Memphis you know right. so you know it, it was something where every day we, we felt that we were like doing like black box theater you know all the actors and I mean John Singleton was a studio you know mm -hmm. all the all the casting decisions that normally I would have to kind of jump through a bunch of hoops with the studio you know John knew where the special effects would be with this movie which is the performance which is you know this very complex character DJ and he, you know, Craig, um, he just really had a, a, a straightforward vision of how he wanted to shoot the picture. He knew exactly what he wanted to shoot. There was no flat fat, mm -hmm. you know. It's like we, we, we're, we're kind of like brothers. Our, our, our cultural references, just uh, from movies to, to music, just we work off of each other. And um, we sat up and watched a lot of movies like Midnight Cowboy and mm -hmm. Taxi Driver. Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. Now, okay, so you, you two are sitting there watching movies and you, and you react to the same, to both movies. You like the same, yes. you, yeah. you don't like the same, you see the same omissions, mm -hmm. you would have done it a different way, and you agree on it. We're, we're film geeks. We, we, yeah. we grew up in a time in which the movies that we watched were, um, there was a mixture of the film and the music. You would go to the movie, and there would be a, the life of the, the picture on the screen, and there would be a life the picture had when you listened to the album of, of, of the film. See, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a kid of the 80s. You know, I grew up on, uh, you know, Flash Purple Dance, Rain, right. Flashdance, Footloose, right. and these right. were all movies that, uh, you know, had a very clear narrative line. But there was also, you know, I mean, who was Kevin Bacon? I mean, who was Jennifer Beals? They weren't like stars. But uh, the, the narrative was just rather compelling, and, and the performance is really good. I mean, I sometimes will say, man, go back and watch John Lithgow and Diane Weiss awesome. in, in Footloose. You know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> you know, right. you have really good actors do these, you know, really musical movies. And, and you've, you've both agreed on Terrence. We both, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was clear. It was a lock. I mean, uh, one of the things that was asked of us was if we could put a, a, a rapper in the, in the role you know, maybe we, we'd have more of a financial deal with the studios, and we were like, unequivocally, no, we had to have Terrence Howard play this role. Why? 
Terrence is one of those one of those actors, and they would say this in the black community that, like in the black community, he's like a huge star. Huge. But he hadn't had a chance to cross over yet. He hadn't had the opportunity. He was always the the, the great supporting player in, in various films, where he was like the watchable guy in the background. And you know, Craig and I just you know we, we were like, if this guy like gets the right role and the right shot, he's just he's gonna be indelible. And and, and that's what's happening now. When, when I met with Terrence, I also saw that there was a lot he had in common with the character. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the, the fact that this whole movie is, is geared around a, a guy who feels that uh, he might be closer to the end than the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, his father died rather young and he's kind of got that, you know, mm -hmm. stuck in his head, is that, you know, Terrence has been in like over 30 films mm -hmm. as a supporting character and, and, and he's been doing quality work. And, and I felt that, you know, when he read the script, he realized yeah, this is this is that shot I keep hearing about. This is that that moment that I've really got to step up my game. And so he he had a hunger that 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 mirrored DJ the character he played, uh, his struggle. Roll tape. Here's an example. This is a clip in which uh, uh, DJ lays down a rap about his life. Here it is. You can see what we're talking about. This is my life, and it's a battle within. I gotta survive, even if I'm sinning the wind. And if I show no remorse, I reap the devil's reward. He said he'd give me riches, but I'm looking for more. When I was young, witnessed my dad standing for right. Black pride in him, even though he passing for white. Took years for my life, now I'm missing the man. This is the gift I was given, so I just live by my hustle. Keep hustling. It ain't over for me. No, it ain't over for me. Keep I'ma step my game up and get what's coming to me. Keep hustling. It ain't over for me. No, it ain't over for me. Keep on flowing. I'ma step my game up and get what's coming to me. You made the point while we were watching this. Yeah, this is also the first time um, in, um, in film history that we've had a, a, a actor play a rapper and has, he's done it in such a believable fashion that he's garnered the respect of the hip-hop community, especially the Southern hip-hop community. Okay. And that was a big thing with, with, with us. I, I told Terrence, I said, listen, I know you can play the pimp part, but can you be believable as a rapper? Yeah. And, and he, he said? And, you know, well, he's, he said he'd give it a shot, and, yeah. and we took him to Memphis and hooked him up with um, uh, Juicy J and DJ Paul, a group called Three Six Mafia. Yeah. And they're independent artists that have sold like how many? Like eight million. They're records. platinum artists. Yeah, they platinum. They, they've sold they so many albums, yeah. and they make so much money because they 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 distributed them independently. And we got them in the studio, and he made this one record over a ten-hour period. And once he made that one record, and he came out of the studio, and we heard it, we like we knew that we we had something because when you watch the movie, there's a surprise that the the character actually has talent. Yeah, you know that's that's it's a surprise the, to him too. That's yeah, yeah. It's, he, yeah. you see it on his face. All right, now here comes the criticism. This is from the New York Times, Manola Dargis. <laughs> Great, I love this. <laughs> yeah, read on, read on, read on, read on. We love it. Rubbish, she says. But it is precisely the kind of rubbish movie executives seek at Sundance, hoping that the film's beats, pimp hero, and putative exoticism will attract young audiences. All right. I had to look up rubbish, I, yeah. I, you know, because and it's garbage. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, you know, uh, I, I, the the most interesting thing about this movie is that it's never quite taken in the context of itself. It's always taken in the context of how much it was purchased for at Sundance. Right. And there's almost like this knee jerk reaction that some critics have of like, why did they? Why did they? Pay yeah. you know for, for so much for this movie. <laughs> well, and, I, I, everybody remembers the story. I mean, all these stories, and whether it was in the Times or where it was, you know, all these executives were flying into Sundance because they yes. had to negotiate with you guys about yeah. this movie. This yeah. was a hot movie to be seen, and everybody wanted a piece that, of it. That's what we everybody wanted. Everybody wanted to make the winning bid. That's right. what we wanted. I mean, we set it up like that. We showed it to the right people in town that we knew were going to talk it up, and because yeah. Hollywood, Hollywood is. is more about the hype than it is the content, and we knew we had a great movie, but we knew that if we can get if we could hype it up in, in the right circles, that going into Sundance people will really anticipate it. But one thing I I I love it that um, that Manola said that that it, that it is that is rubbish because, you know, I've always told him you know that, that you have to be very careful of of, of everyone liking your movie, and right. this movie was 
you know, so loud of that Sundance. We had a screening with 1,500 Mormons sitting there rapping to the screen. Yeah. You know, so um, I like to have a voice of dissension, but in, in, in this case, you know, you know, it's it's like a such a small minority, you yeah. know, of, of people that are saying that there's a debate between what is an independent film? Is it a film that is a um, a film that only shows at like the Angelica or Art House pictures, or is it a film that could possibly be wildly commercial? And I think there's there's a big debate within the independent film community as to what makes an independent film. This is truly an independent film. This wasn't made by a mini major, you know. Um, you know what I'm saying? How they have their sat their satellite studios that make so-called independent films. This was financed by myself. You know, Craig Craig. You know, came out of Memphis as a filmmaker. He wasn't manufactured. You know, he he truly believes what he's doing and and has a vision. And so um, I think that it's good that we have um, people who actually are going to 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 say certain things about the picture because uh, um, I think that they're more speaking towards. What they feel and uh, what they film in their in their background, as opposed to what the film actually is. Yeah, I hear you. Um, let me take another clip, and we'll come back and talk more about it. This is where DJ um, Shelby explains to DJ and Keys his theory on rap music. Here it is. The rap is coming back home to the south. Yeah, man. Because this man, this is where it all began. Heavy percussion, repetitive hooks, mm -hmm. sexually suggestive lyrics, man, it's all blues, brother. It's all about pain and making music, man, with simple tools by any means necessary. You got to get what you got to say out because you got to. Every man, you know what I'm saying? Every man has the right to contribute a verse. <laughs> Let me, let me get at this, too. There's a deal made with Paramount, right? Yes. They get the rights. They come out and, on top in terms of buying this. They make a multi-film multi deal with you guys? Well, we, we, we oh, with you. Uh, license the picture for them for a period of time. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and then what I made it, I'll, another deal with them for two more films, uh, puts, that were for, for $3.5 million, million a piece. The reason I did that was Craig had this other movie where we had talked about you know doing and we really felt that no matter what that we were going to have a big problem doing getting a studio to green light it yeah and it was really controversial hold up it's really controversial and we just had to lock in the money for this this other movie now since the movie that we thought we were going to make that we never thought would ever be greenlit they've greenlit it's mm. black snake moan he's doing it this fall right and it's with what samuel makes it so Jackson. controversial well i mean <laughs> See, we're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> but you know, I, I'm I'm doing a movie. I'm <laughs> well, <laughs> Craig, I guess, I guess. No, it's about it's, exciting, it's about the blues. What you know, every movie that I'm trying to do, I try to kind of like take a musical slant. Yeah, you want it. music so, in your movies? Yeah, very yes. much so. Especially music from my region, and right. that's very important. And this next movie is about the blues, and so it's. But that's not controversial. What's controversial about the blues? Well, the main character. Well, the, the, the main character yeah, is what? Well, she's um she is? she's uh, I guess a nymphomaniac. Yeah. Um, I don't really like that term because i've heard that that's not a correct I told term it was more commercial yeah, yeah but uh <laughs> but she's she uh you know it kind of gets beat up in this old black country guy takes her into his house and nurses her back to health and when he finds out the whole town's is that no one where is samuel uh L. He, jackson samuel L. jackson plays the old man and christina right. ricci plays the young girl so he, ah. he kind of you know keeps her prisoner so the town won't abuse her and use her and so it's uh but he does it by keeping her on a chain yeah. and she has so, this she has this faded confederate flag on her shirt on her yeah. shirt so yeah but before i leave all this <laughs> we're, we're, we're going for it on this yeah, one we are. We really are. <laughs> go. but, there's but, nowhere to hide there, there's the nowhere to hide thing, on that no. one. The, <laughs> the beautiful thing about what he but what he does is that he has a specific vision and it's organic and it's yeah. like you know it's so original that it's kind of like it, it, we're walking we're always walking this fine line of doing it within the system because you really have to work with people who who trust you and, and trust and trust his vision to do what he has to do and i've been there i mean i've, I've been in those meetings with when when we were with them and it's like it's hard so in the end what you want to do i mean this is this has put you on the map i, I guess so yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i guess you're on the map <laughs> You're on the map. What you want to do is, is, is A, take what you've learned in your region, right. Memphis, South, look at the music, and in an age in which movies can be made away from Hollywood, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, although you still need the distribution system, mm -hmm. right. away right. from Hollywood, right. uh, combine movies about your region, about your own 
instincts mm -hmm. and about music. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's Independent interesting. Films. It's interesting because uh, in my city, there's always this conversation that happens where it's like, when are we going to come back? When's Memphis? Because we've never, regardless of what we've been through and our greatness, we never quite healed from, you know, April fourth, nineteen sixty-eight. Martin Luther King. Right, yeah. and the city has gone through many changes since then. But more so, after Stax got bulldozed and, and, and all the, the artists began to, to stop, you know, they left. Uh, there's always been this sense that we have this rich history and we have this, uh, this rich music and, and these great musicians. Was that? And Elvis passed. And, yeah, exactly. and Elvis passed. Yeah, there's yeah. all, all of these benchmarks that, you know, but, but, but it's very interesting that, that, it's, that it's a film and that it, it perhaps is an independent film community that's going to start bringing more of a spotlight to the, to the music of the region. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. I mean, I like to see people come together and make things happen. Uh, Hustle and Flow is in theaters nationwide on July 22nd. That's a Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great okay. to see you again. Good to see you too. Greg, great to meet you. Pleasure to be here. Really. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.